Um, a very good morning to all of you. I'm very pleased to, to be here, to be a part of this uh, cool uh, forum. This is a very, very cool forum and, and very happy to be in Phnom Penh and it's actually where even a cool forum can take place. Now, my topic is why we need to rethink human rights activism. It's two strange, mouthful words, human rights activism. And I am a human rights activist. And one of the, the reasons why I chose this topic is because I want to deconstruct this image of what human rights is and what is the human rights activism is all about. And having look at that, looking at a topic, I'm, I want to look at the misperceptions about human rights. Here's the problem with human rights. We think of human rights as these documents. We think of the work, therefore, of design, or the work is, is designed for people who can actually write, probably can read and understand these documents. So you have to be an intellectual. So everybody thinks that human rights work is for intellectual. And most people think that human rights work is for lawyers, right? When we think of the word of human rights, that's what we think. I've actually taken the second perception of human rights very personally because I'm not, I'm not a lawyer. I'm actually a trained economist. But here I am leading an organization, a human rights organization in Cambodia for the promotion of human rights. And this is why I want us to look at these issues. I think we have an image crisis and we need to change that. So we need to change from this image of textbooks of all of the international conventions and the declarations and all of the different UN mechanisms. If you sit with me and you count, I'm actually going to take the whole 18 minutes just to count all the conventions, all of the declarations and all of the things that is written by even just the UN alone, right? I won't be, be even be able to present anything. So here's another misconception or perception of the work of human rights. We think that human rights is for heroes. And therefore, we wait for the heroes to take a lead and change the status quo and really affect the change for this universal acceptance of human rights. And if I'm not a hero and I'm being taught, generally, all of us are being taught generally to not be, think that we could be heroes. So guess what we do? We stay away from the work. So I think we still, we, we have a human rights, uh, an image crisis because we think that human rights are for heroes, and these are the image of people we think. Now, there's great truth, there's some truth, and there's good truth to all of these things I'm, I'm presenting now. And the third thing is we think that human rights work is pretty dangerous. And if you look at this image, it's actually taken, I believe, by my colleagues here, sitting in this audience also. Uh, it's, it's a powerful image. Is, is confronting the armies, but we think it's actually pretty, we think of human rights work as being confrontational and therefore pretty dangerous. I think we need to deconstruct that image also. And if it's, for, if it's <coughs> dangerous, only a few handful brave souls will get into the work of human rights. And this is actually an, another problem in terms of the image crisis that I'm, I was referring to. The message we need to spread about activism and looking at all of that image and, and considering it as a crisis, I think global effort for human rights need to change, starting with changing or spreading this word of perceptions of, of human rights. Now, if you look at this change, this, this, the, the, the work uh, for, for human rights, what, what I do on a, reg on a day to day or on a regular basis. Human rights is actually the easiest, easy, almost to me, is an easiest topic to be spreading. It's universal. And in fact, all of us are born to believe in equality, to believe in justice, to believe in all of these universal values that actually most of the human rights people are supposed to be advancing. So it's actually an easy sell. I will not even ask, or I am not even asked, to sell you a vacuum to clean your house. 
or to sell you water filter and try to prove why the water filter, you need the water filter in your house. I don't, I don't even need to prove many things because human rights are actually universal. And in fact, I think all of us are born wanting to change the world. And I think we need to keep that spirit alive because we can. So here's the image of the great things that people around the world has achieved. So in, in, in an easy to, it's, it's an easy sell, isn't it? It's actually not that difficult. And I want to say that human rights work is pretty fun. I have to admit, with guilty pleasure, that photo was included of me having a birthday party at my office with many, many cool colleagues who probably not are the best dancers in the world, if you can see from, from the photo on, on the right. But they're very, very cool people I, I get to work and engage and meet on a, on a regular basis. These are people great, with great hearts with, who want to change the world for the better, who at least the world around them in Cambodia and Phnom Penh and in the provinces. So it's actually pretty fun if you think about it. So we actually, if you think about it, we're actually doing many of these, many of these things that most companies or most other places are doing as well. We have party, we go, we have retreats, right? We have, we dance. We even once in a while have birthday uh, party. So that's what I, I want this image is that we actually could be more creative. And here's also what we think of human rights when we think about the work, or when we think about the work, these are the image we, we tend to have, and that is human rights is generally about organization. So you look at, on your left, these are pretty uh, well-known organizations. Uh, we managed to put CCHR as one of them, just, we want, just because we promote. Uh, we want to promote. I want to take this opportunity to promote my organization, but you look at these international and national organizations. They're pretty well-known for the work they do, but human rights is way, way more than the organizations. It's way, definitely way more in Cambodia. It's definitely way more than CCHR. It's not just CCHR, it's not just Licado or other organizations or Human Rights Watch or Amnesty. There's so many great individuals with great ideas who have spread the news, promote human rights, and also has affect many of the changes happening around the world. So you only need to look at your right. On, if you look at your right side, the, the slide, you see individuals affecting change. And you don't have to look very far. Right? You look at this image of the uprisings in Tunisia, Egypt, Libya. If you look at the, the, all of that happening in the Middle East, most of those things are done by individuals. In fact, and this is, why I want, this, this is where I want to stress. So there's something we need to learn from a very great industry. So you see this, this image in front of you on the slide. How many of you women want to date the guy in the middle? In the 1980s, kids, if, you'd have, if, you, haven't, if you weren't born then, here's some news. In the 1980, in the 1990s, it wasn't cool to be an IT geek or an IT nerd, right? Here's what they are now. They are icons. Steve Jobs is considered to be changing the world. And he's a cool guy. He's a very, very cool guy. In fact, there's a movie made basically on the guy who created Facebook. Right? So we have a different image. And if you remember the 1990s and the, and the, two, and the, and the 2000s, you see these workplace with all of these cool scooters and stuff like that. The IT industry managed to reshape or change its image. It's something that we need to learn from them. Because by doing that, there's a lot of, there's millions of people who's now creating apps, cool apps, right? We use them. Most of us use these Facebook, and some of you who find my speech uh, boring probably is now talking on Facebook with your friends uh, and, and doing other things. Uh, so, so basically, these are the cool things produced by cool people because they want to be a part of a cool industry. 
we need to read, I think it's something for us to learn from the IT. Here's uh, some of the great things many people have done so far. One of them is city.org, it's, uh, it's produced by my colleague. It's a cool website for human rights. It just won an award, uh, at, uh, an ICIF award. You look at some of these websites with t technologies, with st the creativity and courage of individuals, things could happen. Here's what we need to see change. My message to all of the organizations, less bureaucracy. We cannot fight a humongous government bureaucracy with more bureaucracy of our own. So we need to look at ourselves, and the first things we need to deconstruct is our own attitude. We need to look at human rights and the work differently. We need to be creative, we need to make it fun, and we need to be accessible. We need to actually include just about everybody because you don't need to read the ICCPR, the whole text, and understand every word of it to understand the values of human rights. And because of that, you can join me. In fact, all of us should be on equal and try to, to do the little things that change the world. And one of us will bounce to make it big like Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, right? So you look at the two, on the, on the left is the changing latitudes of the people who's already in place, like myself, like my organization. We have to be, we have to be honest with the reality on the ground. We have to be pragmatic, and we have to be smart, creative, courageous. But more importantly, we have to be courageous to fail, courageous to try new things, and actually allow many, many things to spring up. And that's pretty difficult for many of us who's been established, who's doing these things for many years, to just allow the room for creativities to, to take place, to flourish. On the other side, my message to all of the geeks out there, if, you have, if you're creating apps for Apple and, and, and uh, Google, the Android, come and help us creating apps for human rights. Having, instead of having farms wheel, maybe we should have forest wheel. We should have urban wheel, you know? Let's protect Phnom Penh Lake. Let's try to do these things. Be creative, join us. It's actually a cool industry. It's a cool area to be a part of. So you geeks, come with me. Let's do these things and let's join me in actually changing the world. So I'm gonna leave you with the last quote and that is by John Maynard Keynes. He's actually an older guy. He's not that cool. I don't know why I'm quoting him. <laughs> um, but as you can see, I think we start, we definitely need to start to change just the two things, and that is the attitude of the many people who are in this field, and the perception and the image of, people, of the rest of the world, of the people in the world, on what we do every single day, and what they can do to advance human rights. Thank you.